Hello learners, hope you are doing well. I welcome you all to the week 4 grade assignment solution video. And without further ado, I think we should jump into the first question. This week has a lot of good questions and I think you are going to enjoy solving this week's questions. So let's see what the first question has to offer us. The first question reads, for which of the following situations is a nested loop required? Right, a nested loop is needed. Assume that no procedure is used. So this is quite important. No procedure is used. So which means we have to do all our computations from scratch. And it's also said that it's a multiple select question. So in my opinion, I think you should all try to find out how to reach the final output just by using your your logic of you know what whatever you have learned in these four weeks. Just put that knowledge to the test and try to understand how would you come to an outcome that they have asked in this option and go one by one. You know, it's okay, it's perfectly fine to take your time uh, because uh, these kind of questions are what require time. Because you need to understand that what sort of a procedure would you, as somebody who is going to do this in the future, use. So let's see the first option. The first option says, to find the number of words with at least two vowels from the words data set. So you need to understand how would you approach this question? How would you approach this? In fact, how would you approach the solution? So the first thing that you would have to do is you have to iterate through all the cards. So you know that the words data set is actually a data set where each card represents one word. So fine. So the first iteration that is the the outer loop as I might I like to call it the outer loop is what you're going to use to iterate through each of these words so in the first iteration you would go through these words now you are going through these words but how do you understand if the word the particular word has vowels in it or because the vowel of a particular word is a letter it's just a letter so you are going through the entire word, but you need some way to go iterate through each of these letters. Now, to iterate through each of these letters, you need another loop. Now that loop is what is going to be a nested loop because it's going to come inside your main while loop. So this is your main loop. Then you have to have a smaller loop inside that goes through each of these letters and determines whether it's a bubble. So let's say you have a list of bubbles and you're going to see if the letter that you're looking at currently inside your inner loop, if it matches to either of these bubbles, if it does, let's say you are incrementing a variable called C, which means that you have found a word which has more than two vowels. So in that case, you have to use a sort of a, a nested loop. That means the outer loop is going to iterate through the words, whereas the inner loop is going to iterate through each of these letters in that word and determine if you have more than two vowels in that word. If you do, you're going to increment, let's say, a variable C. And that's how you find the number of words with at least two vowels from the words data set. So in this case, the first answer was your correct answer. But remember one thing, this is a multiple select question. So always be careful. Don't just jump off to the next question as soon as you find, find the correct answer. Exhaust all your options. Determine that you do not, do not have any more possible correct answers before you jump to the next question. So with that said and done, let's go to the second option. The second option is to find the pair of students who share the same birthday from the scores data set. So again, here you have to find a pair of students. So in this case, what do we do? So let me just clear the screen here for now. Now you all must be remembering that to find a pair of students means you have to take two cards simultaneously so that you can look at these two cards in your hand at the same time. And what you can do is you can compare their date of birth and you can see if they're the same. And let's say if both these cards were initially in pile one, 
what did we do? We put one card into pile 2 and another card into pile 3 so that you could do this iteration over and over again so you can find all possible pairs. So how did we accomplish that at that time? Well, what we did was we had one loop that went through pile 1. You took the top card X. Then what you did is you went through the card, uh, pardon me, you went to the pile 1 again. You went through the pile 1 again. And what you did is the next card that was coming in the pile, you took it as the first card and this became Y. So now you have two cards X and Y. And what you do is you just say that if your X dot, let's say, date of birth, let's say if this was one of the um, parameters, let's say X dot date of birth is equal to your Y dot date of birth, then what you do is you just increment a value of value like C. Let's say C is your counter variable. And uh, you're counting the number of occurrences of pairs of students who have the same birthday for this course data set. And you keep on doing it until you have exhausted all possible pairs and you know permutations and combinations possible for that that uh, data set. So in that case, what happens is that you see you have used a nested loop where the outer loop is going through one set of cars that is pile one and putting it into let's say pile two, while the inner loop what it does is it puts all the cards into pile three. Okay, this is just a representation. It could be the either it could be either way and you do this until you find all the combinations so in this case again you're using n an iterated or a nested loop where you iterate through pile one you put one one set of cards in pile two and the other set of cards in pile three so that you can do the pairing all over again so now you see that for this option two you're going to need a nested loop so that means your options one and two are correct we're not done yet let's go to option number three let's see what does that offer it says to find the number of students whose physics marks are greater than average physics marks so here too you're going to require two while loops the first while loop let me play the screen the first while loop what it would do it would go through pile one it would read the top card x it would let's say take the total mark it would take the uh, pardon me, take the total physics marks of that card because here they want to find the average physics marks. Then it would just, let's say, increment a variable C so that you have got known how many cards you have gone through. You know how many cards you have gone through. And what you do is, once you come out of the while loop, you just divide, let's say this was P for physics marks and uh, let's say C was just the variable that kept count. And once you come out, you take a variable called average where you divide p by c and you get the average marks and then you again go through the while loop this time maybe because each time you see a card you're going to deposit it in pile 2 so that you don't you know keep running infinite loop so in the second iteration what you do is on the second while loop which is outside so you see this is one loop this is another loop you see all the cards in pile 2 and then you see if the x dot physics of that particular student is greater than the average if so let's say you have a variable called count and you increment count by one and let's say you move the other cards to uh, pile one back to pile one so you see here you did use two while loops but they were not nested they were not one inside the other you did a while loop count computation first followed by another computation and the first one determined your average while the second one is what uh, basically gave you the count of the number of students whose physics marks are greater than the average physics marks. So you see in this case we did not use a nested loop so that is not a correct answer. Now the final option says to find the number of bills from the same shop from the shopping bills data set. So again here I don't think you would require a nested loop because all you would be doing is you would be seeing that if let's say your x dot shop name i'm just giving a acronym here let's say the x dot shop name is equal to equal to let's say we want to find big bazaar so you would just have let's say a variable called bb and you would increment it by one each time you saw a big bazaar so that would happen until you have enough cards left or you have exhausted all your cards in pile one and once you do that well you're well you're good to go
and you see you didn't have to use a nested statement you just had one loop and did the entire iteration and then you were good to go so options three and four were not the correct answer so the correct answers in fact to option uh, the question number one was options one and options two so these were the two correct answers for question number one so with that we are done with question one let's move on to question number two